Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. My name is DRL and we are here with some NBA 2K Mobile and we're kicking off a brand new series where we're going to break down the top players for each month and each position, right? So today's episode is going to feature the top shooting guards for May to give you an idea of what shooting guards you should be using for head-to-head, -head, for events, and just for having fun in the game, right? We'll tell you which players are the best. We'll compare all of them side by side based off their stats. And then you'll come to a conclusion of who you want to use in your squad. All right, so let's get into it. So in the month of May, we've seen a couple of themes, right? We've seen the playoffs theme, right? Since it was a bit longer, green time, the triple doubles theme, and we saw the final theme kick off on May 30th. So we have all the stats for all the shooting guards that dropped inside of May at the top of the screen. We're going to go through each player and we'll highlight their best stats. And then you'll get an idea of which players are elite in which category and overall which players stand out more than others. There are some instances where the player stats aren't as good as their gameplay. So there might be some players that are actually better than what their stats are showing. Right, so for example, CJ McCollum, a five in shoot off dribble, five in mid range, five in three point shot, a five in agility and a five in playmaking. Those are all very good stats. When you compare them to the other shooting guards, you'll realize that 15 of the other shooting guards have that stat. And there's a total of 22 shooting guards that dropped in May. And we'll do the same thing for the other stats as well. So for mid-range, 17 of the shooting guards have that stat as well. So you start realizing that some of those five stats are common and it's kind of like the base minimum that you want to see for your shooting guards. And then quickly you'll start realizing which shooting guards stand out more than others because there's some stats where some are elite and some are just way below average. We'll go to three-point shot. We'll also look at agility. So for three-point shot, there's only one player that has higher than the five and that's the triple doubles James Harden. That's why I stress to you guys that that theme had some of the best cards that you will ever see in the game. But as far as the five, let's see how many. 17 of the other shooting guards have a five as well. Now, last but not least, we'll look at agility. Agility is a little bit more different. Only 12 out of the 22 players have a five in agility. But that's a stat where CJ McCollum stands out. It's an important stat too, because that plays a part in the player's speed. As you can see there, it says run speed and jumping. Then when you compare that with playmaking, different passes and knowing when to pass, right? Those two combine determine a player's speed, right? Because playmaking is kind of the speed with the ball and agility to speed without the ball, right? That's kind of the way I've come to realize how it works. Now, CJ McCollum has a three and layups and dunks. That's a stat that hurts him. And the same thing for Mano Ginobili because Mano also has a three. So 14 other players have higher than a three and only six players have a five. So those players that got the five and layups and dunks, they're the elite in that category. And if you have a four, I think that's the baseline average. So if your player has a less than a four then make for layups and dunks, that's an area of opportunity. And I'll point out the players that have a three. Now the players that have a three in that category, Pistol Pete, Chris Middleton, Clay Thompson. We already know CJ McCollum, Duncan Robinson, KCP, and Max Struess, and Mono Ginobili. Now for some of these plays, the three makes a sense because that's not really their play style, right? Max Struess, Duncan Robinson, Clay Thompson, those are shooters. You don't really expect them to drive a lot. And even Chris Middleton to a certain extent. But like players like Mono Ginobili, who are known to drive to the rim, that three doesn't represent how their play style should be. So that's something you got to increase. And eventually, I think something that 2K should boost as well. Now, back to McCollum, he also has a three in defending. So as far as defending, again, baseline to me is four. But out of the 22 players, 18 players have a higher than a three for defending. That means his CJ McCollum's defending is below average with the baseline being 4 once again. Now, the players that do have a 5, Clay Thompson, that's why I think he's very underrated in this game, Kobe Bryant, and Allen Iverson. These are the best defending shooting guards for the month of May. No coincidence, these are some of the best shooting guards in the game as well. These are the things I look at when I'm trying to figure out what player builds to make and what players to use. But just to give you an idea, this is how the video is going to be. We're going to be doing these deep dives, right? And if you enjoyed the video so far, don't, don't be afraid to slap that like button and share with anyone in the community. Because the better this video does, the more likely we'll keep dropping episodes and taking the time to create these, right? This is not your average NBA 2K mobile content. This is definitely for those that are into the stats. So since we use CJ McCollum as the base example, how we're going to do this video, I'm going to go into the shooting guards that I've seen mostly used among players' lineups when I'm doing my team reviews. If you have not checked those out, we dropped two episodes where I reviewed subscribers' teams, gave some ideas on how to build them out, and also gave a showcase of their teams. If you want your team to be reviewed, I'll leave it in the description. There's a community tab post with instructions on how to have your team reviewed. During my last episode, the most popular shooting guards I noticed were the Manu Ginobili, the Max Struess, the Pistol Pete, the James Harden, the 
Anthony Hardaway, Donovan Mitchell, and that was pretty much it. I didn't really see a lot of the other shooting guards used. I get it. Some of them were event rewards. Some players required crafting and some players were pack exclusive. We're going to start with Donovan Mitchell. Fight is definitely a fun player to use. When comparing Donovan Mitchell, right, he's got the five and shoot off dribble, five and layups and dunks, five in mid range, five and three point shot, five in agility, five in playmaking. There's only five shooting guards that have that stat. And it's Kobe, Penny Hardaway, Anthony Edwards, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brown, and Zach Levine. Pretty elite company. Mid-range, we also established like your players should have a five in that category. Three-point shot is also pretty common, right? 18 players have that three-point shot. You should also have at least a five for your shooting card position. Post scoring, Donovan Mitchell is actually one of the lowest post scorers, which I found kind of odd because he is pretty decent in the paint. He has a fadeaway shot as well. If you look at all the shooting guards, he is the lowest one in that stat having a one. You need to have at least a three to be among the elite company at the shooting guard position. Agility wise, he has a five, which is pretty good because only 11 of the other shooting guards have a five in that stat. And then playmaking wise, I would say he is one of the top shooting guards for that position. Because three of those players have a six in that stat and they were all from the triple doubles team. If you take them out the mix, I'm going to mention you in some pretty good company. Because right, the other players will be Penny Hardaway, James Harden, CJ McCollum, Allen Iverson, and Mano Ginobili. But overall, you can see Donovan Mitchell, for the most part, bro, is one of the best shooting guards dropped last month. All right, next up is Penny Hardaway. One of my favorite shooting guards. I told you he was going to be top tier. He didn't disappoint. But five and shoot off dribble. That's the stat you mostly see. Layups and dunks. He's one of the few players that have that stat. He's got the five in mid range. He's got the five in three point shot. He has a four in post scoring, though. That puts him up there in some pretty elite company. For post scoring, the only players that have that who have a four in that stat are triple doubles James Harden, Kobe Bryant, Chris Middleton, playoffs James Harden, and Devin Booker. So again, that's a really good stat to have for your shooting guard. Gives him a really strong inside outside game. And he has the five in agility, which we saw earlier. It's not as common as you think. He's also one of the strongest shooting guards, which is important when driving to the rim. You want to be able to take contact when you go for those layups. You can see he's one of the best shooting guards when it comes to strength. The only other players that have those stats is James Harden, Anthony Edwards, Clay Thompson, Playo James Harden, and Allen Iverson. Which means these are these are some of the wow. best drivers in the game. Pair that up with his five and layups and dunks. Hardaway goes crazy. And then he has the five in playmaking, which we did show also earlier. Not too many players have that five in that stat. We already know that Kobe Bryant's elite. You can see Kobe got the five in the shoot off dribble, the layups and dunks. Again, one of the few players that have that five in that stat. Mid range is solid. Three point shot is solid. Post scoring, he's also one of the few players that has that four in that category. Agility, he's one of the few players that have that as well. Playmaking, he has a four. That's the difference between him and Jordan, right? Jordan has a five in playmaking, while Kobe has a four. But Jordan has a four and three point shot where Kobe has a five, right? So that's the difference between the two, but they're both top tier. And then Kobe has a five in defending, which is one of the top for that position as well. Now, Josh Giddy, I'm actually going to feature because I did see him in some lineup. And because this triple doubles card has some boosted stats, I want to highlight that, right? So he doesn't have the five and shoot off dribble, layups, dunks, mid range, but he does have a five and three point shot, which is good. What stands out for Giddy is that he's the only shooting guard in the month of May to have a five in rebounding. And if you look at the rest, there aren't many shooting guards that had a four. The only shooting guard that had a four was James Harden, and that was also from the triple doubles team. So for the most part, the shooting guards only have a two and a three in rebounding. Now, some might argue why does it matter for the shooting guard position? And I agree, it doesn't matter as much. But if you got a team that has a lot of shooters, including your big men and your power forwards, then you need your shooting guards and your small forwards to be able to grab rebounds, right? But that's the reality of it, right? If your big men are out there in the wing, then it's good to have smaller players that can rebound. So it all comes down to play style. Pistol Pete's another player that was shown a lot during the reviews. He's got a five shooter dribble. That's what you like to see. Leos dunks is a three. Put him at the bottom for that category. Five and mid range is great. Five and three point shot is great. Green post scoring is actually pretty decent. It's not bad, right? The highest you saw for that category was a four. Agility is a four. It's not bad either. The highest you've seen is a five. Strength is a two. So that is a bit on the lower side. Re's, rebounding is a three. So that is on the higher side. So that's not bad. And playmaking is a six. One of those 
perks of the triple double cards is that they all have a six in playmaking, which puts them at the cream of the crop and puts them also at the top in the game as well. And then Pistol Pete has a four in defending, which isn't bad as well either. Next up is James Harden, arguably. See, I don't even think it's an argument. This triple doubles James Harden is the best shooting guard in the game. Game play, we already know he's up there with the elite players. And stat-wise, there's nobody coming close. In the past, there was an argument between James Harden, Tracy McGrady, Kobe Bryant, and Michael Jordan. Those are the four that always come up. And in the fifth, I see a lot of people bring up Dwayne Wade, rightfully so. Dwayne Wade is really good, especially defensively. But when this triple doubles card came out, it just put him at an it put him at an even more GOAT level for the position. He's got the five and shoot off dribble, which is what you want to see. Leos Dunks is a four, so it's close to the top tier. Five is mid-range. Six three-point shot. He's the only player with that stat for that position. Four and post scoring puts him up there with the elite. Five in agility is also top tier. Four in strength, top tier. Rebounding four puts him right under Josh Giddy. Playmaking is a six. We already explained him, Marovich, and Giddy are the only players with those stats. And he's got a four in defense. Push him close to the top tier as well. We've got Manuel Ginobili, episode number two of Team Reviews. I saw a lot of people had him. We're coming fresh off the first event for the finals team where he was the event reward. But Manu has the five and shoot or dribble. That's what you want to see. Leos and Dunks is a three. That stat's too low for him. You saw compared to the other shooting guards. That's something you got to boost on Manu. Five in mid-range is great. Three-point shot is great. Two post scoring also puts him in a lower category. And the argument is, well, why does your shooting guard need to have post scoring? Look at the other players who have that stat and see how their gameplay style is. That's not a bad stat to have in your repertoire if you want to be doing fadeaways or if you want to take advantage of your size against the smaller guards. And if you're going to be using mono, having a fadeaway shot will be super important. Agility-wise, he has a four. If you could get up to a five, that's what you want to see. Strength is a two, so taking contact will play a part when driving to the rim. So he already has a two in strength and a three in layers of dunks. So having him be a slasher and head-to-head, -head, it's not going to be as ideal as you want it to be, which is crazy because I always felt like Manu was very good in that type of play. Two in rebounding, as a point, if your big men are not going to be shooting. So if you're going to surround him with like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Hakeem Olajuwon, you can play it safe with them doing those pick and roll mid-range shots. They'll still be close enough to the rim to get rebounds. Mono has a five in playmaking. That's very good. And he has a four in defending, which is very good as well. Mono could be elite for your squad with the right build. And I'll go back to Max Struess because I actually did see him on a couple lineups as well. So four in shoot off dribble. It's a little bit under what most of the players have. Three in layups and dunks. Again, it's lower than what most players have. Mid-range is a four. That is also lower than what most players have. But he does have a five and three point shot. Two in post scoring is lower than what you see. Four in agility is pretty good. Two in strength is lower than what you see. Two in rebound, the same case. Four in playmaking, it's pretty good as well. And the three depending is a little bit lower than what you want to see. But if you want to build on Max Struess, I think it's worth it because he's an incredible shooter and his release in the game is very good. So you want to bring up his mid range shot. That way he can give you a little bit of inside outside. Bring up his defending too. Bring up his playmaking agility. And if you could, bring up a shoot off dribble. All right, so that was a jam-packed video. I totally get it. But a lot of people have been asking me to compare the players. I didn't want to do a tier list. I didn't want to do that because I found the tier list get outdated fast, right? There's between two to four themes that drop in a month. And each team has a good amount of players in each position. So I figured this style of video will work. That way we can keep it fresh. Every month we'll drop a new version featuring those specific players and with the event rewards making up most of the meta inside this game it kind of makes sense to keep up with that as well plus i wanted to show a visual so you guys can see the stats and understand better what goes into my thought process when making the builds and also to give you the idea of what i do when i do the team reviews as well so as always i appreciate the support you guys are awesome and if you want to see these type of deep dive breakdowns Gotta share it with the community. You gotta stop the like button. That's the only way that these videos perform well. All right, so I appreciate the support. I will catch everyone in the next one. Peace out.